You are listening to TF Talk News, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. It's your buddy, Starscream. I am the new leader of the Decepticons. From now on, you will take orders from me. <laughs> Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net and follow us on social media channels at tfylp. Well, hello. Did you miss me? It's your good pal, m m m mister Starscream, back in action after a few weeks off. Sorry about that. Like usual, life just gets in the way. It was a bad two weeks to be out of commission because I missed leaks galore, pathetic virtual attempts to cash in on the usual Comic-Con hoopla this time of year, and plenty of aggravating retailer-exclusive sellouts. How you manage through it without all my maniacal guidance, we'll never know. But there's plenty of Morrow to suck out of the Transformers bones for this last full week of July. But first, grab your masks and let's head to the store for the On the Shelf Report. On the Shelf. Starting just today is the summer toy reset for Target stores across the nation. Although each store tends to set its own specific schedule, the reset should currently be underway at a Target store near you. This means lots of product is being clearanced to make way for brand new product, and a lot of it was downright surprising. Just this morning, I was able to track down an Earthrise Scorponok in store by using my tricks of the trade, which you can find in episode 15 of TF Talk News. The big guy comes in shippers of three units, so if your store is getting them in, expect to have to beat out at least two other collectors to claim your prize. Skylinks has also been found in store, and this seems to indicate that Target isn't afraid to carry the entire line of size classes for Transformers going forward. In a post-Toys R Us world, I can personally find some solace in this fact. We've still yet to see any sign of the Wave 2 Earthrise Deluxes or Micromasters, but they're just a first sighting away from becoming reality. Oh yeah, you might find a double dealer if you're lucky. And they even fixed the street date mistake for Leader Class War for Cybertron toys. Thanks, Target! The Cyberverse toy line is still kicking, as the Battle Call Ultra Class toys retailing for $24.99 are showing up on shelf, along with two previously unknown Blink and You'll Miss Them gift sets, Repugnus Revenge and the Seeker's Sinister Strike Force 4-pack. The Repugnus set is really out there, and features a redeco of the one-step Repugnus in a green and purple Decepticon deco, along with three new insect mode Repugnus figures. The Seeker set consists of four redecos of the Warrior-class Cybertronian Seeker mold as Thrust, Thundercracker, Skywarp, and Starscream. Of note is that Skywarp and Starscream are molded in clear plastic, which homages their respective teleportation and ghost versions. This set retails at $49.99, and although the Cyberverse Warrior class leaves a lot to be desired, Seekers collectors just won't be able to resist it. In other Cyberverse news, Deluxe RC and new Warrior class Optimus Prime have also been discovered adorning Target shelves over the past week. In terms of clearance, War for Cybertron Deluxes are currently on sale for $16.99 in some stores. The previous Cyberverse gift sets and the Quintesson and Sharktacons have been as low as 50% off, and some stores even have Battlemasters discounted. I even found the Earthrise clones for 50% off in store. What the heck? Remember, clearance pricing is set at the store level, and toys are usually marked down on Thursdays, so your local mileage may vary. Good Good luck luck hunting out there. While Target has been hitting home runs, not much of the same can be said about its big bruiser bully buddy, Walmart, who hasn't seemed to restock much in terms of Transformers since the first big Netflix toy explosion back in June. But they have dropped the price on G1 reissue Astrotrain to $25 in some cases, and it may still even see more of a discount, so stay on the lookout for that. On the online side of things, those that missed out on the upcoming Netflix Earthrise Soundwave sets and Alita One toys got a second chance as Walmart.com specifically opened pre-orders back up again, even after reports of them canceling various pre-orders. I've also received reports of various War for Cybertron Deluxes appearing on shelf at discount stores like Ross and Dee Dee's Discount for around $11. 
So if you're willing to venture into the slim pickings of these retailers, be my guest. And I think that's it for what's new on the shelf as of this recording. If I missed anything, feel free to berate me by emailing me directly at tftalknews at tftalk.net. And maybe, just maybe, I'll give it right back to you on the next episode. On to the reveals! Earlier this week, Hong Kong Company 3.0 revealed some incredible redecos of their deluxe-scaled Bumblebee movie highly posable action figures. Made available through a virtual online Comic-Con reveal, Sideshow Collectibles made available pre-orders for a limited run of the Bumblebee movie Optimus in a shattered glass color scheme. And even more surprising was their fabulous movie Blitzwing toy in actual G1 Blitzwing colors, yellow head and all. This is kind of a punch to the gut for fans that wondered how well this deco could have translated onto the screen instead of his imposter colors. <clears throat> Seriously, this looks awesome. And although it isn't screen accurate at all, this may be a more highly sought after release than the original deco. Both of these non-transforming figures retailed for over $200 and sold out immediately, but you can still latch onto a thread of hope by joining the waitlist on Sideshow Collectibles' website in case anyone cancels their order. Yeah, right, no one's canceling these orders. Beyond the Bayverse movies, 3-0 shocked us all by revealing two new screen-accurate toys to their Transformers offerings, Siege, Optimus Prime, and Megatron. What's hard to swallow about these is that they are very similar in look to the original toys, because the on-screen portrayal of these characters is using the CAD data from those toys. There's almost no stylization to speak of, so Kibble on the toy is now Kibble in the show, and also Kibble on these high-end action figures. This aesthetic is going to take some getting used to, but hopefully the show stands out as something special, and these no-nonsense portrayals may become more desirable. It seems non-transforming toys are going to keep coming in a variety of price points and executions. With this much variety being offered to collectors all over the world, even if there's something you don't like, everyone will have options that represent something they love. Speaking of something I love, we're continuing with the non-transforming parade. Even more Transformers Red Series toys have been found in Walmart's spooky database along with already discovered G1 Bumblebee, Transformers Prime RC, and Beast Wars Cheetor, G1 Starscream, Transformers Prime Knockout, and at least one Optimus Prime Redeco have recently been discovered. It certainly seems like the Red Series will be a Walmart exclusive toy line, but after this first grouping of toys does come out, maybe we'll see it expand beyond a retailer exclusive line. The first three figures, Optimus Prime, Megatron, and Soundwave, are expected to hit Walmart shelves this fall. Yeah! Nope, we still haven't hit transforming figures quite yet. I present a large array of reveals from Flame Toys, makers of highly stylized premium figures and model kits. Two new upcoming Furi model kits have been revealed, and Beast Wars fans will rejoice. Leo Prime and Optimus Primal are on the way, and Leo Prime looks especially neat with a cloak. I can't wait to see how they pull that off. Beyond the somewhat reasonably priced model kits, Flame Toys has doubled down on their wallet drainers, the Kurokari Toys. At least four new molds are coming out, and these tend to cost between $300 to $500 a piece. I've gotten my hands on a few of these, though, and I have to say they tend to be worth the cash if you've got it. A drawing of a G1-inspired jazz figure was revealed this week, and he looks to feature all the cues you need to make a really great jazz toy. There was also a lion form of Victory Leo that can connect with their crazy Star Saber figure to make Victory Saber. A stylized Seeker toy was shown in black silhouette, and we also got a look at the Fallen with tons of translucent flames. And finally, the IDW Rodimus figure was confirmed to be part of this expensive Kurokari line and not one of the simpler model kits. Wah, wah. All of this product looks amazing, but someone needs to tell Flame Toys to hit the brakes. No one can afford to get all this stuff, or can they? Walmart added in-package photographs of their upcoming G1 Blaster reissue, and the box is what you might expect if you've seen any of the other vintage G1 reissues. Of note is that the gray plastic on Blaster appears to have a more brown hue to it, so maybe this reissue won't be 100% accurate to the original. Blaster is still available for pre-order on Walmart.com for a very reasonable price of $29.99, Hurry before they realize that that price actually makes sense. Hopefully you didn't miss it, but Target put up Studio Series 68 Leadfoot earlier this week, along with a bunch of G.I. Joe Classified Series exclusives. 
The 2020 exclusive toy release pattern was in full effect though, and all of these toys sold out in less than 90 seconds. Have no fear though, because as a single deluxe exclusive, each store should be receiving at least one full case of eight of the final record for the Studio Series. Another find is that WFC E41 Runabout is apparently in the target backend database as a product with its own DPCI that is different than the regular DPCI for War for Cybertron toys. This hints that this figure may in fact not be the Walgreens exclusive that I surmised, but may instead be another target exclusive figure. There's also WFC E26 Voyager Thrust which looks to be another retailer exclusive of some sort, hinted at in the Conehead 2-pack listing found on Amazon. Which store, though? Your guess is as good as mine. Although not really a reveal, MP49 Black Convoy, not Nemesis Prime, has been released in Japan, and if you pre-ordered it from an overseas source, it should be on its way to you now. In-hand photos have revealed that there are some mold differences from the initial MP44 release, and the dreaded knee assembly has been modified, which allows less nerve-wracking use of the legs of this Pinnacle Transformers toy. Black Convoy is packaged in a box about the same size as MP48 Leo Convoy, and will make even the blackest of hearts beat once more with excitement. The Karatomi teased us mercilessly earlier this month with the silhouette of a new Masterpiece Seeker toy, I like to think we are well past the days of black silhouettes, but who am I to judge? No new mention of this toy has been made since the initial reveal, but plenty of amateur toy sleuths have dug up old images of MP03, thinking it's a new mold. I'm not sure what to expect, but it sure would be funny if the first fully new rendition of the Masterpiece Seeker since its inception was some off-the-wall character like Redwing instead of Starscream. I expect some sort of announcement this week rendering this news obsolete, now that I've taken the time to record myself talking about it. But I still love you, Takara Tomy. And finally, we have made it. The War for Cybertron animated series debuts this Thursday on Netflix and we still don't really know a whole ton about it. By the time next week rolls around though, the show will have aired and I'm sure good old Mr. Starscream will have plenty to say about it. I'm really unsure why the Netflix branded Voyager Optimus Prime 3 pack is using the Earthrise mold when it's supposed to be part of this new Siege continuity. It was pretty funny watching the Fan First Friday when they showed the 3D spin around of the Siege model from the show and then said it's the same as the completely different toy they revealed. Whatever. Marketing must be a lot of work. Be sure to tune in Thursday with the rest of us trans fans and weigh in when we inevitably spew our guts about it on TFYLP the following Monday. Till then, ta! Don't be snoozing. The TF Talk Network exists due to the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans across North America and beyond. Check out our variety of shows like Microcasters, Ouch My Wallet, Cut the Tape, and our flagship show featuring a rotating all-star cast, TFYLP, which has been running for over 10 years. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms at TFYLP. The TF Talk cast is on Discord, you can join us for free by typing bit.ly slash tftalkdiscord in the browser of your choice. Intro and outro score provided by Surrender. You can find Surrender at surrender-official.bandcamp.com. Directly support our shows and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations through Patreon are used to cover production and server expenses that keep our shows running and are not distributed to individual staff members. If you have any comments or feedback, you can directly email the show at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and we'd love to read some of your comments on the air. And if you've got a hot news tip, send it my way. Oh my god, Target just put up the listing for MPM 10 Starstream. I think it's coming out soon. I don't know. Good luck. It's Target. We're probably all doomed.